everybody, this is Corey, and welcome back to Crafted by Corey. If you are new, welcome. I hope that you'll consider subscribing and hitting the little bell so that you get notified every time I upload a new video. And to my subscribers, thank you so much. I'm so excited to have you back. Please be sure to comment and let me know what you think about today's video and provide any feedback. Let me know what you guys would like to see. So today we are going to be saying a goodbye to summer and hello to fall. I know it seems early, but fall is just around the corner. So we're going to be starting out with some summer coastal items because I just couldn't get enough of it after last week. And we're going to be easing our way gently into fall with a couple of other items. So five projects in total. Stay tuned and let's see what we're working on today. Here we go with DIY number one. So we're going to be starting out with some frames from Dollar Tree with cute little things in them, um, as well as some nautical little frames some vinyl or if you prefer to do a printout for transfer that's fine too i have the nantucket blue chalk paint crystal chalk paint and then the white chalk paint so i'm going to start by taking the backs off of the little nautical picture frames i'm going to set those little circular inserts aside for another project and pulling out the little metal tabs that we're holding um, those backings in and then we're also going to take apart these little pictures I'm going to take the backs off of them and then I'll be removing the little circular uh, decorations if you will going to set those aside as well for another project and then just sanding off some of that sticky they used double-sided tape so just want to clean that up a little bit I'm not too worried about it because I'm going to be using this craft paper later to cover that up it's a little hint that um, I picked up from Sammy over at unicorn dust designs so thank you to Sammy for that great idea so just going to cut this out and then I'll be setting it aside until later on in the project. Okay, so now we are going to take care of the back sides of these. These are actually going to become the fronts. And I am being very lazy and pouring my paint right onto the backings here. I'm going to be going for an ombre effect. So using the Nantucket blue, the crystal in the middle, and then the white at the bottom. And you can see I'm getting a little bit too much paint here. So I am only putting some of it on some of them. And you'll see me later transferring it over to the third um little backing that we're going to be painting to kind of spread that out um i also ended up having still too much paint so you'll also see me using that on the little circular backings that we took off later um, and then i ended up using it for another project for this video so stay tuned to see what ends up happening with that but as you can see, I am just taking my paintbrush and moving it across the colors and just dragging it down through. And this was a lot easier than I anticipated it being. I've seen other people do this online and I had never tried it myself. I am not a big painter. I don't have a lot of experience with paint. So um, this was something new for me. But you can see me adding on some of that excess to those little circular pieces that um, we pulled off of these earlier. And then I'm just going to go back and drag that paint through to either edge. I'm sorry, I'm a little bit out of frame here, but hopefully you'll get the idea of what I'm doing when you see me set it down there. So just making sure that I've got the whole thing coded. And I just wanted to thank everyone so much for all of the kind words and support from my last YouTube video. I feel like I set the bar really high for myself, so I hope that I don't disappoint with uh, with these projects, but I promise you I have a lot more to come, so I hope that you'll stick with me. 
So here I am showing you that the glass in these frames is actually held in with these little foam um, pieces. So I didn't really feel like taking that whole thing apart um, to paint the frame. So I'm just going to go ahead and tape up the glass. But then when I was trying to put the, the uh, tape down, I noticed that there was a little bit of a gap between the glass and the frame. So I ended up cutting just some cardstock um, that I had. It was like some old um, invitations and sticking that in there to protect it. Unfortunately, I lost the footage of me painting the frames, but I literally just used the crystal um, chalk paint and painted the frames with crystal. And now I'm just going back in um, with some of the Nantucket blue to just give it a little bit more texture. These frames just have some really nice detail that I wanted to bring out. Okay, so I did lose some of my footage, unfortunately. I am still using my cell phone because I have a goal of a thousand subscribers, at which point I will actually buy a camera. But my little cell phone keeps running out of memory in the middle of what I'm doing. So I have been losing a lot of my video, which I've been able to recover some of it, but not all of it. So thank you for your patience with me as I work through these issues. But I wanted to show you the way that I put um, that last project together with the pictures. So it's really very simple. Once I had everything painted, I went ahead and I, trying to get rid of the glare, went ahead and attached the little pieces to the backs of the frame uh, inserts that we had taken out earlier and painted. Once everything was dry, just attached that. And then I used my Silhouette Cameo to create little peace, love, and joy um, appliques or whatever you want to call them. You can hand letter this, you can use a um, transfer, anything that you want. It doesn't have to be with um, a silhouette or a Cricut. And then what I did, I flipped the whole thing over and I used my Milan rope. Milan, no, Manila. I keep wanting to call it Milan. Manila rope. And I attached it all the way along the length of the three frames because I wanted to make sure that this was not gonna come undone while it was hanging up on my wall. Cause the last thing I need is to have this falling and glass shattering everywhere. So I did attach it the length on both sides. And then I added in underneath the sawtooth hanger, a loop that I used tons and tons of hot glue on as well. And then I put the sawtooth hanger back on over it for some added support. So there you go. I'm really happy with the end result. I think it turned out super cute, but let me know what you think in the comments. Okay, here we go with DIY number two. So for this one, we are going to be using those circular uh, pieces that we pulled off and painted with that extra paint. Some more nautical cutouts. These are little wood cutouts from the Dollar Tree. Also going to be using five gallon paint sticks. Going to have five of these for this project. These are the longer ones that I got at Lowe's or Home Depot. And then some leftover gray paint um, watered down with water to make a stain that we used last week. So I'm going to use my trusty little miter box to trim down the paint sticks. Just going to get rid of the handle part of these. And uh, there you go. Sand them down with our little Dollar Tree sanding block. And then use the little paint stain to go ahead and give these all a little bit of an older look. So once it is completely dry, I'm going to be using these tongue depressor size sticks also that I got from Home Depot or Lowe's along with some wood glue and some hot glue to just hold all of this together. So the hot glue obviously gives you that immediate hold and the wood glue gives you a super secure long term hold and that'll be all that you need for keeping this together. So now we're going to be taking our circular pieces and I'm going to be using the same wood glue and hot glue to attach our little cutouts to the circular pieces. Oops. 
I want to give a big thanks again to everyone who has been subscribing and commenting. Your comments have just meant the world to me. The response I got from the last video, I am just blown away. So thank you so much from the very bottom of my heart. You have no idea what it means to me to, uh, to have all of your feedback. Um, if you haven't yet subscribed, I really hope that you will and that you'll join us for future videos. And if you didn't catch last week's video, I will make sure that I leave a link to it in the description box. So I hope you'll check it out. Now we're going to take our little sign and get that ready and I'm going to go ahead and attach the hanger first because often I will go ahead and completely oh, complete my project um, and then I try to go back and put the hanger on and it just makes it difficult on, on myself. So um, going ahead, I knotted the ends and I'm going to come in with my staple gun and just staple in a couple of staples to secure that on either side. We're going to trim that off and then we're all set with our hanger. There you go. So now we're going to take the circular pieces that we put together and we're going to attach those to the sign as well. Again, using wood glue and a little bit of hot glue for that immediate hold. And these will be attached really solid for the long term. I felt like it needed something more. So I am taking my jute cord and putting on my little finger protectors because I tend to like to burn myself with hot glue. Um, but just using a bead of hot glue all the way around each of the circles. And I thought it'd be cute to kind of crisscross it in between them. So rather than cutting the jute cord and um, having three single rounds. Uh, I just kind of overlapped it in the middle and did almost like a figure eight kind of thing around each of those round um, decorative pieces. you have it. So then I decided I thought it was just a little bit too plain or too neat or something. So I wanted to distress it a little bit. So I went back in with some white chalk paint and just did dry brushing along the sign itself on each of the edges of the little nautical pieces. If you want to distress it, it definitely would be easier to do this before you put it all together. So I recommend doing it beforehand, but um, I just went back in and did it afterwards. So DIY number three, here we go. So for this one, we're going to use a Dollar Tree dolphin sign that I had left over. I also had um, three bags of sea glass, and I thought it'd be really cute just to give this little dolphin a uh, makeover. So first I'm going to sand off a lot of the glitter just to kind of help with, with painting this little puppy up. And then we're going to come in and use the chalk paint in crystal. 
There you go, Waverly Chalk Paint and Crystal. I love this color. It's just such a crisp, beautiful color for summer. But we're gonna give our little guy two coats of chalk paint. And then once he is completely dry, we're gonna come ahead and uh, come in with our sea glass. Now, this is a great project if you like puzzles. Um, because what we're going to do, oh, and I wanted to tell you about the parchment paper. It works. If you guys saw my little haul video, I talked about getting the parchment paper from Dollar Tree with the pop-up parchment paper, and the paint doesn't stick to it. So um, I don't end up pulling it up and having it attached to my project after the paint is dry. But at any rate, puzzles, if you like puzzles, you're going to love this project because I'm coming in and just um, trying to figure out the best way to arrange all the sea glass and then I'll come back in and glue it down. So this is a part of my video that was corrupt. I was able to recover it, but in the process, I somehow managed to flip it completely upside down. So I apologize for the bizarre camera angle. Um, it actually, it looks perhaps right side up the way that it's shown, but it's kind of at a weird angle because I actually was filming it from the other direction. So there you have it. But at least I was able to recover the video for this piece. And there it is completed and hanging on my wall. So let me know what you think in the comments. So DIY number four. All right, I am really excited about this one. This is a baby blanket from the Dollar Tree, some leftover decorative cord that I have literally from more than 20 years ago, um, some embroidery cord that I have, a needle. We're gonna be using some polyfill. Oh, and that is the stick to a foam brush that was not usable anymore and I had saved it just in case. And then I'm just using this um, pizza screen as a template to cut out around from the baby blanket that you're gonna see me doing here. So I have to give kudos to Olivia from Olivia's Romantic Home. Um, she has a beautiful YouTube channel and I saw her do this um, the other day and I decided I was gonna use it as my Try It Tuesday. So if you don't follow me on Instagram, I encourage you to join me over there. I do a Try It Tuesday, every Tuesday, um, where I attempt a project that I've seen someone else do. And I just love this one so much that I wanted to go ahead and videotape it. Normally I just do the project and I take a picture of it and I give kudos to the person that had the idea, um, but really wanted to incorporate this into my fall day course. So thanks, Olivia. So we cut out our round from the fabric and now I'm taking the embroidery floss and I'm using, I'm dividing it. It's normally six strands and I'm only gonna be using three of them. Now, I kind of had wished that I had used all six because Olivia had warned us that her thread snapped and so she suggested using something a little stronger. Um, I figured maybe the three strands would be enough. It wasn't, it snapped on me too. So just be careful towards the end when you're pulling this all together. But as you can see, I'm just taking my needle in and out through the fabric. This is such a simple project, you guys. Anybody can do this. You don't have to have a lot of experience with sewing to do this. You're gonna cut out around. You're gonna get a needle and thread or hopefully something a little bit thicker than thread. Come in and out about a quarter to a half an inch down from the edge of your fabric and just do that all the way around. That's it. Very, very simple. So then you kind of have a little bit of a sack and what you'll do then is take your polyfill and we're gonna stuff the little sack with the polyfill. I probably stuffed this a little bit too tight also. That might be part of why I had the issue with my string popping when I tried to pull it all together. I didn't actually show you that part. This is my successful uh, venture. Once I redid it, um, I just didn't pull it quite as tight. So you can see I've got a little bit more of a gap in there, but I fixed that with hot glue later. So I'm taking the stick from my foam brush that I had saved because I had ripped the foam off of it, um, painted that with Java chalk paint, and now I'm just using my Dollar Tree uh, sanding block to distress that a little. 
sticking that right down in there, trimming off the little strings that I used. And I'm just going to use a ton of hot glue just to get that secured in there and then also kind of to smoosh that uh, fabric together and get it to where I want it. So now I'm coming in with a pick from Hobby Lobby. This originally I think it had been like $2.99. I think that's what that said. Um, but I got it on clearance. I think it was like 70% off at the end of the season last fall. Um, I'm going to pull it apart. It comes apart really, really easily. You can see I'm barely even just pulling on it and the little floral paper tape stuff gives way. And I'm going to arrange this around the stem of my pumpkin. I just twisted each of the ends around. I trimmed them off where necessary with my wire cutters, and then I hot glued everything into place to secure it. Isn't that super cute? I just love it. You have to let me know what you think. So I wanted to add a little bit of a bow. So I'm taking my cute little decorative cord. It's like a white and an iridescent. I know you can't really tell on the, the camera, but um, it's, I think it's very pretty, just very soft. So making myself a little bow by looping that cord and then tying it off with another piece. And then I'm going to go in and I'm going to trim it and then use a little bit of a lighter to singe the ends just so that it doesn't unravel and I make sure that it stays beautiful for years to come. Um, then I'm going to be using the hot glue not only to hold my bow together for certain, even though I knotted it, just want that little extra hold, but then also to attach it to my pumpkin. And there you go. Now I love this so much. I decided to make a little baby one. I didn't start videotaping that at first. And then I was like, you know what? I'll videotape this one too, <laughs> just to show you again. So this is a much smaller version. I just cut out a little round circle from some leftover fabric that I had had from another project, again, from literally years ago. So any scrap fabric that you have around the house will, will work. Even if you have like an old sheet or something, you know, you can cut that up and, and use that. Um, stuffing that, pulling it tight. Now I did not have a problem pulling this one tight. I hadn't packed it quite as full of the filler stuffing, the polyfill. That might've been part of it. It's also a much lighter fabric than the baby blanket fabric I was working with before. So that could have had something to do with it as well. But I had a lot more success with this one. And then from the Dollar Tree, I had picked up the little birch sticks Oh my gosh, I love that. Isn't this so cute already? So the birch sticks from Dollar Tree, picked one out that I thought would work, tucked that in there, and then just used some hot glue to secure it. You can see that one's a lot um, more form-fitting. Isn't that cute? And so then just wanted to add a little bow to it with my jute cord. Um, but I quickly decided, even as I was tying it, I was like, you know what, this is a little heavy for this little baby pumpkin. So I very quickly decided, nope, and I took it right off. <laughs> and I just pulled the jute cord apart. It's basically a three ply, I guess you would call it. So just pulled it apart and I used a single strand from the jute cord and that actually worked out much better. I was much happier with, with that result. you guys I just love it so stinking cute and here they are together mama and baby pumpkins I just love them what do you think here we go for DIY number five so for this one we are using a Dollar Tree little I'm not sure if that's a candle holder or a vase but also chalk paint in pumpkin and then in sheepskin going to attempt to use gold paint, you'll see about that later, and a Dollar Tree cake plate. So just cleaning that up a little bit, 
getting it ready to use using a little baby wipe to get all of the residue off so on the cake plate i'm going to come in with the sheepskin this is um, by folk art plaid and you're going to give this two coats of paint now i'm only painting the bottom of it so this will be um, continue to be food safe um, so if i decide that i want to put something on it a cake or something later i will be able to do that because i am not painting the top surface so two coats of paint on that then also doing two coats of paint of the pumpkin on the base and i did go ahead and paint these ahead of time because i didn't want you to be able to see through the clear plastic if i tried to paint it afterwards you would notice that it needed to be painted or something and then I would have ended up having to paint the surface so here is where you see that my gold paint was a fail it was completely dried up <laughs> so plan B sharpie paint marker in gold so yeah this is where you know we find a way or make a way so when I couldn't use the gold paint with the paint brush I ended up having to use a different technique and you're gonna see me kind of figuring this out as I go here. So I originally thought I was going to just edge it and then try to distress it with the paint marker. Yeah, no, that didn't really work so well. <laughs> so you'll see what I do in a minute. But um, I went ahead and edged the base of my little stand for the cake plate. And then I thought, oh, yeah, well, we'll distress this too. I still hadn't uh, given up on the idea that I was going to be able to do it this way. Um, so I'm knowing that I'm not happy with it, but I'm trying to think about how I want to fix it. And in the meantime, I went ahead and put it together. And I just used hot glue for this. If uh, you want to be super careful to have an extra long hold, you might want to use E6000, but I just used hot glue. And so here I'm showing you, but I'm really, really not happy with it. So I'm like, what am I going to do? So I decided to go ahead and pick up that Sharpie marker again. And I went back and I colored in that whole scalloped edge underneath the cake plate. And then I also went back and corrected the base. So there you can see the scalloped edge all painted in. I think it looks so much better. Um, and then I went ahead and did the same along that bottom edge for the base. Now, if you wanted this to be super perfect, you could tape it off. I didn't bother. I figured I would just use my finger as a guide and just get a nice solid stripe along that bottom and um i think i think it worked out just fine i was i was happy with the result there still not happy with those little stripey things that i did on the on the rest of the base though so i just went back in and painted over it with some more pumpkin and just made sure i was careful along that edge that i painted gold There it is, so much better, I think. So here we go with the final reveal.
Okay, everybody, that's it for today. I hope that you enjoyed these projects. Looking forward to next week when we will be full on fall. And until then, be well, be kind, and make it a great day. Take good care. Bye.